Hey, good morning, everybody. Sarasota Tim coming to you from Delray Beach, Florida. And I pulled over here. I got a good one for you today. I want to talk to you guys. And I want to get right to it because this was on my mind. And we talked yesterday about getting out of debt and, you know, uh, the possible economy uh, changing and a downturn. And we've already are, are experiencing that in a downturn because, you know, we're all complaining about what groceries, gas, and everything cost, rents, houses, all of that. We know all that, okay? So we don't want to just keep beating a dead horse. Yeah, yeah. So time will, it will take its uh, time to work through. We will get through it. But today's video is another encouragement video because I want to talk to you guys about the real secret to success that most never talk about. Most. Some do. The smart ones. Most want to dance around it and talk about positive thinking, <clears throat> writing down goals, and uh, working a little bit more, making an investment, uh, doing all of those things we've all heard. Positive thinking, telling yourself every day, making positive affirmations. I think I can. I think I can. <laughs> okay. While there's a certain uh, truth to any of that, the simplest and basic secret to success, to getting out of debt, to getting another job, to meeting the love of your life, to finding out where you should live, to healing your body, to healing uh, all your needs, Everything that you need. You know where I'm getting ready to come from, don't you? Because you know Sarasota Tim. That's right. It's thinking on things above. It's talking to God. You know, people say, oh, here we go. You know, listen, it's not a crutch. It's real. The Bible is real. The words and the promises. I put a link in a video the other day of three hours of promises of, uh, of an audio that reads the Bible the scriptures that are the promises, not the Bible, like what, starting from A to B, A to Z. It's the promises of God. They're numerous and they're so comforting. And look, it's true. If everybody believed it, then the whole world would be better off because the government and everybody could just come on TV and say, hey, the real truth is not what we've been saying because they don't give you the truth. The real truth is to believe in the Bible that the Creator said, if you'll seek Him first and do good and show love and be kind and treat others like you want to be treated, all of these things will come to you. Because that's exactly what He says. He says, the greatest of the commandments is love. So you say, oh, that's a tough one. I can't stand that guy that just drove past me. <laughs> I know what you mean. It's a trial. It's an almighty trial. And you got to do it though. You got to just repent. You got to turn around. You got to change your mind. And here's why I'm saying all this and why I had this epiphany and I felt like I had to share it to you. I quit drinking a few days from now, three months ago. It'll be three months on the first. Every beginning of every month is another month. So it's not been that long, but it's been, you know, pretty good time. In that time, I know that I've asked God a lot of stuff to help me with it, and I wanted to lose some weight, and I wanted to make more money. I tried to apply for some jobs in my earlier videos. I was trying to be a stalker. I was going to do this and good, do that, and then God brought this thing that's just like a perfect match for Sarasota Tim, you know, with the wine sampling and meeting people. You know, I, I was in the car business years ago. I like dressing up a little bit. I haven't had the opportunity in many years to wear any kind of smart casual or nice clothing. You know, when I had my business, it was a, an automotive related thing. So I enjoyed that coming back, like living in my camper. I enjoy it again. Like I, I shared on the video the other day, how I had one years ago in California and I wanted to lose weight <clears throat> and I got busy and I met a guy at a gym and he was like a trainer and he, he was, he kind of made me uh, accountable. And every day we were pushing hard past the envelope. I'm doing my own thing now, but I can tell you that I made good gains and I become more cognizant of what I was eating 
and what I was doing and how often I was going to the gym. And the drinking thing has given me, prior to that, I was sitting in the camper for a lot of the time, you know, just bored going, well, you know, maybe I'll open a bottle of Cabernet, have myself a glass of wine. I'm retired, I can do what I want. So I, I feel good. You know, it gives me a little uh, relaxation. I can be who I not really am. <laughs> and I would do that. <clears throat> and all that was doing <laughs> was adding weight to me, blowing my face up, killing my gizzards on the inside, losing all motivation. <clears throat> Definitely didn't want to go to the gym or get in my car and drive anywhere. So dead in the water. As soon as I quit that drinking, man, it's like they inflated the tire. I, I became fully taut. I, I got interested in making money, working out, losing weight, taking walks, making YouTube videos, sharing everything. It's just coming out of me. I just wanted to, to help others. And apparently it is. I get a lot of very good feedback from you folks about how you've been encouraged to clean out your closets and to start drawing that social security at 62. You know, and forget the naysayers that say work, work, work for five more years. You know what? Miss Tammy left this morning after spending a couple of days with me and she was a little beside herself. She texted saying, in a half an hour, I'm only this far to her job, which is kind of far. And it's all these people that are having to go to those jobs. I don't miss that time of that commuting in the traffic. I know you have to do it when you're working and you're still working and you're paying your bills, and you're raising your family. I understand. But people that don't leave early enough and they get road rage or they're, you know, got too much coffee in the morning or something. And they're just, it's just gridlock out there. Uh, I don't miss that at all. And at five o'clock, and I stay off the roads during those hours. So I say, as soon as you can get out of that work job thing, quit and start drawing your social security and pick a job that you can work your hours and do your thing. And it's a job you like, and it's only a few hours a day. But anyway, we're getting off topic. If you start reading your Bible, listening to those promises of God. And if you start doing more than just listening to the word or talking to him, but if you show him <clears throat> with a capital H that you're going to do action, what are those actions? Well, those actions are, God doesn't say, have yourself a liquor drink, smoke yourself another cigarette, or take a toke of marijuana, or talk with a potty mouth, or disparage someone on Twitter or YouTube, or to tell them you know more than anybody in the world because you're the all wise one. He doesn't say to be angry, mean, and, you know, not let somebody go in front of you when you're driving. Remember how you were taught driver's ed? I, I was taught driver communication. You see a signal, slow down, go ahead, go ahead. You know, be kind, show love. It's reciprocal. It'll come back to you. God brings it back to you. You know, you help somebody financially. You cut their grass. You ask them if you can pick something up at the store for them. You um, do whatever, you know, you see an opportunity to be kind. Even if they don't see it, God sees it. And you just keep banking rewards more than you'll ever get in buying an investment property and getting some assets and sitting back and waiting on your, what you think you're doing. Now I'm not saying, so don't take this wrong, that buying gold or stocks or these things, personally wouldn't do it now, but weren't good things to do. If God led you that way because you were doing the other things first, it's worshiping him, seeking him, he might've opened those doors for you and someone came in your life and said, this is an opportunity. And yes, people have made a lot of money. But when people just worship <clears throat> that first, they never even talk God. They can't spell God. They don't want to hear God like so many are trying to do in our government, in our, in our society to eschew God from our culture is really sad. I say, push back. I say, don't listen to the media. I say, start cleaning out your closets, 
start purging your mind, purge your homes, purge your car, purge your debts, quit spending money on things that you don't need, use that money to pay off debt, get debt free. When you get to be 62 and you don't have a huge nut to crack and you're not sitting here with 84 payments on this and 72 payments on that and $10,000 balance on this card, $4,000 balance on that card, and you've gotten yourself in such a mess. I say, start praying. You don't know. You have no idea how God can bring a blessing or make something cross your path that will help you to eliminate some things and to take you to further uh, places, cheaper places. Something will happen that is beyond your understanding. It even says that in the Bible that his ways are not our ways. It's not for you to understand it. It's not for you to say, how is he going to fix this? How am I going to get out of that? Does the, does the vase, does the clay have the right to ask the creator, why have you made me this way when one is an ashtray and one is a beautiful vase? Who are you to ask the creator how he made you? You know, he, he decides what you're going to do, what you're going to have. But you got to first turn from your ways, my friends. You got to get rid of all these things that our society has just put in their head. They go around and let me just start by saying, I'm not on a soapbox. I was as guilty as the next one. I've said it in other videos. During the 2016 political climate, well, I don't know how it sucked us all in, but people who don't even watch politics were watching that garbage and they pitted us against each other. And if you went this way, you were this kind of a person. And if you thought that way, you were labeled as this kind of a person. Meanwhile, we were never different from what we were. And that's a creation of God in his image. We're not a liberal, a Democrat, a Republican, a conservative, or a right-wing nut, or a left-wing loon, or we're not any of those labels. We're people. We're people that any one of us, by just pure nature, if you saw someone hurt laying on the ground, they just fell off their bike, they just got in a car wreck, there's not one of you watching me right now that wouldn't try to help. Saw a car in the middle of the road, a, a lady, and she needed her car out of the way for somebody hit her. Wouldn't stop and try to help. It comes out because that's what's in you, the God in you. Well, bring more of it out. Show more kindness. Start, see, put me to the test. Put God to the test. Just start being nice and kind. Be the first one to talk to people. Be the first one to find genuine compliments. Be the be the one that will not worry about your debt and start praying to God to help you. Be the one that will take the initiative and say, today, I hang up my spurs like I did and quit that drinking. What good is it? What good is it? It's money and it's hurting you. It's unhealthy. It's just like cigarettes. You can't just even smoke one a day. It's not healthy. It costs you money. You don't need it. Marijuana, I smoked my share of it, believe me. I came from the 70s. In those days, it didn't knock you out of your shoes like it does today. The stuff they make today is it's laced or something. If people want to do that and drive their car and talk to you, you know that they're not their self and all these benefits that it gives you. Well, that's up for debate. You know, I wasn't that long ago I tried it for some benefits and I never saw any relief for for this or for that or what it said it certainly doesn't it certainly doesn't help glaucoma <laughs> all it does is give me a red eyes so anyway my friends you know check yourself you know if you're getting ready to get on Twitter and you just think that it's gonna make you feel so good, or even YouTube comment section, and you just have to 
let everybody in the world know that you know more than everybody else and that the person talking doesn't know a thing because you, why don't you at least get on TV while you know everything and help us all out? <laughs> That's just a joke. But turn from those ways. Don't be like that. You know, I, I used to do that. I was a, That was such an ugly Tim. I'm embarrassed to admit it. I really am. I've said some things. I got on that Twitter. Oh, you don't know anything. And then uh, five minutes later, this one doesn't, this one needs to hear from me too. You don't know anything. It's not doing you anything good. It's just giving you a heart attack, aging you, angst, everything. You want the secret to success? The secret to success is simple. Clean up your act. Stop doing things that are illegal. Stop doing things that are illegal that you don't need. Stop spending money on things that you don't need to spend money on and pay off your debt so you can be freer, happier. Start worshiping and reading that Bible of yours and talking to him in your car every day and asking him to help you and nudge you for every little decision you need to make. Everything. And the more you rely on him, the more he smiles up there at like, that's my good daughter. That's my good son. You know, you're, you're coming to your heavenly father. You're not leading on your own understanding. You're not trying to run around chasing your tail. You're not listening to this YouTuber, this media person, this whoever, you're, this boss of yours, this co-worker of yours, this other person that told you the secret to life. So be nice, be kind, compliment, show love. That's what he says do. Seek him first and all these things shall come to you so you can crush it.